So one of the, the funniest stories, when, when Colin had been home, it was probably just, just a few weeks, it was nighttime and you know we just cleaned up dinner and stuff and I was taking the garbage out and out, outside to the, to the driveway and I hear the door close behind me and I think, well, you know, that's whatever. And then I hear he's playing with things, right? Right, like they like they did. He locked me out of the house. And we're not speaking he's, the same language here. He's two years old. I can't tell him, turn the lock back so I can get back into the house. So I'm just, you know, doing the sign language things that my child does not understand. I'm thinking, I am never, this is the worst parenting moment. I've had him for two weeks. They're going to take him away from me. <laughs> My girls, the first time, I kind of had this little voice telling me not to do this, but I brought him to the grocery store because I needed to go to the grocery store, and I thought it would be a fun little math time and, and language learning time that we would talk about five apples. Let's get five apples, and let's get six bananas. Yes. Well, we had to pass a lot of other stuff that they wanted more than apples and bananas <laughs> on the way, and I kept saying no to the Cheetos and no to the cookies and no to the this, and they were pretty frustrated by the time we got to the apples and bananas, and then we had to pass some plastic cell phones, which were like, Two ninety nine a piece. They each wanted a plastic cell phone that made lots noise. of noise. And I was thinking, and I, first of all, no, we're here to get fruit. That's just my thing. And, but I didn't realize that my no would ignite in them some <laughs> crazy hysteria. And my, my 10 year old, who's almost a hundred pounds and my eight year old who is 75 pounds ended up lying on the floor, pitching a fit that you would see a three year old. Pitch. And if you had a three-year-old, you'd be able to pick them up and walk them out to the car. But I'm going, no, 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 no. Li pa bon. I'm saying, this is not good in Creole. And they are thinking they're going to get the phone if they scream. And I am realizing, luckily, that this is a very pivotal parenting moment that I cannot leave. But I had to walk and... I had, to, I had to get the milk and still look at them and they're still lying on the floor. They laid on the floor for three minutes or five minutes and I couldn't believe they weren't embarrassed enough to get up, but they were not. And I ended up saying, we've got to go, hoping they would follow me because I'm, I'm knowing that, it comes to it. You can't pick them up. that I can't pick them up. And luckily they followed me and, and from that point forward, I was, I was so grateful to be home and back in the four walls of my house. And from that point forward, our grocery store, like, can I go to the grocery store conversation was met with a no. no. <laughs> remember how sad that was. Oh, and remember how sad I was and how sad you clearly don't like the grocery store. <laughs> and so it took them several weeks to convince me to try again. that they in fact would like the grocery store <laughs> if we went again. <laughs> well, I have one. Um, my sister um, adopted a quite severely handicapped boy from Bulgaria. And uh, he's got autism and a lot of other issues. But anyway, we were on a, a vacation, and I wanted to give her a little vacation. So I said, why don't you stay at the condo, and I'll take him with some of the other kids. And at this point, he was, um, she's got him when he was quite young, but he was about nine and a very tall and de developed nine-year-old. <laughs> so I said, I'll take him up to the pool. And I knew to hold his hand because he's an escaper. He... He just goes and wanders. So I thought, you know, I'm, I'm watching the other kids and I'm holding on to Mitty's hand. And, you know, we come walking in. We're, we're going to go sit by on those little steps. And within seconds, he has whipped off his swimsuit. <laughs> and he was very developed. And these mothers are just oh, gasping. <laughs> and they're ushering their children away. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, so I, I get him up and I take him over in a place where I think we're going to be okay. And, Finally, just, you know, he's wanting to escape, so it's time to, for us to go. So we're walking out, and as we, I'm holding his hand again, <laughs> we go walking by a man who's just lounging in the sun. He was a little bit heavier and had a bit of breasts. And so we're walking by, Mitko just reaches out and grabs it, and is, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, he, he doesn't know. And, I feel, and people are just like, oh, <laughs> That man, oh I just, gosh. I just did with that. But a lot of kids will. They they will strip down yes. at older ages and yes. feel. And this is partly because he's handicapped, but also children who aren't but are from other countries do not want clothes. They or just they feel very um, overstimulated by clothes that have any textures or anything. So they will want to rip those off, and and that can be uncomfortable. <laughs> You're in a crowd of people who don't think that's a normal thing, a thing to happen for, <laughs> with their small children. A 14-year-old. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I remember when Nathan had been home uh, just a couple of weeks and we'd been going through um, learning how to play. And so one night as we were playing with cars, um, I got um, tired of truck, truck, car. So I decided to branch out a little bit. And I start, you're laughing already. I started, um, oh, that's a, that's a Dodge Magnum. That's a, and I'm late naming the types of, of cars. And one of his little matchbox cars was an El Camino. And he just grasped onto that word and thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I can remember a couple nights, he, the next two days, wandered around the house, El Camino, El Camino, El Camino, just saying it to himself because he thought it was just so entertaining. So, and I, we were laughing about, about this. So a couple days later, um, I was at home and I can't remember what happened, but he had a total meltdown, just completely hysterical. And so I had taken him and I was kind of holding him, kind of a timeout. And, and I said, you know, we're, it's, we're having a hard day today. Should we start our day over? And I'm trying to, you know, connect, right? Trying to feel like we finally have some. And he's nodding his head and I said, should we do that? Should we, should we start our day over again? And, and he nods and he, he opens his mouth and I can remember thinking, oh, we're, we're gonna communicate. We're finally on the same page, right? And we're, we're this, this is the moment I've been waiting for. And he looks up at me with his, these big tears streaming out his face and he says, El Camino. <laughs> and there's the car again. So thank you for blowing that moment for me again. But yeah, just, you know, they're just ex wherever they are, except that. So. <laughs>